lovely people, welcome back! So today we're gonna go over the third ever Faded Summons just hit. And we'll go over if any of the heroes are usable, my thoughts, whatnot. But first I want to address, I see a lot of people surprised about this list, on the forum at least. And I'm kind of surprised at how many people are shocked. So, for what it's worth, and for future reference, Faded Summons is very predictable in this way. Row 1 is always Season 1, Row 2 is always Heroes of the Month, Row 4 is always Valhalla, and Row 3 was the only one up in the air. And when in doubt, you can just assume whatever heroes have costumes out, those are good options for Faded, as SG are not going to give us heroes that they, they can still profit off of but if a hero has a costume that means in order to keep it meta relevant you still need to chase that costume for that stat boost or possibly a better special skill so there was a lot of questions whether atlantis would be replaced because there's still one hero to be introduced ursina or if they would maybe do underwild or old challenge event heroes. So it seems they went with the old challenge event. And of course they're going to choose the worst ones, the oldest ones first. So this round we're seeing a lot of the originals. In next round there's still a whole rainbow set of originals they'll offer I'm sure too. And without a doubt they probably won't be the best ones. Gazelle and Black Knight and whatnot they all came later. So it's unlikely that we'll see them until like next year sometime. And... As far as the rest of this, it's possible that Valhalla gets swapped out next time. So there are only three heroes left for them to introduce for the whole set. That is Lady Loki in Fire, Odin in Holy, and Alfric in Purple. And since they skipped over Ursina and Atlantis, it's also possible they might skip over those three in Valhalla. Especially because Alfric is very valuable and I can't see SG giving Alfric away for free in that sense, because they can still make money off of her. So I'll be curious to see what the next Faded Summons list. Valhalla might get swapped out for like Underwild or something. So, but yeah, I've been seeing people surprised that this list isn't better, but Faded Summons has never been Soul Exchange. Soul Exchange, actually like, they can earn off of because people have to pull 25 stars and they have offers for this. Faded Summons they implemented because in some countries it became illegal for them to offer nothing at a certain price. So certain countries price, I mean, you couldn't buy things in certain countries, like the game was blocked. So in order to bypass that, that's how they created Faded Summons, so that for every hundred pulls you're getting something, and you can't say you're getting nothing for that. So yeah, it was just a way for them to bypass this. And as a result, we're not gonna probably get anything too great. So just look at it as like an extra step in training camps and whatnot. Of course, we all wish it would be better, but just being realistic and so you're not disappointed next time, more than likely it won't be. Anyway, so let's go over it. Row 1, Season 1. This is the third offering, so there's one more set, so next time they have a whole rainbow set, but then hopefully Season 1 will go away and maybe be replaced by their first costumes since they're not valuable anymore, not really, and except for a handful. And the secondary costumes are where the stat bonuses are anyway. So I would never get season one heroes ever unless you're leveling secondary costumes and you want multiples, like a Marjana or someone. But in that case, most often you're going to get it for soul exchange food. And let's be honest, so I'm just going to skip over row one. You should not be choosing those. Row 2, Heroes of the Month, Anzog. Anzog, you know, was underrated when he first came out. There weren't, there still aren't many fire healers. I think a lot of people are missing that in their 5-star rarity. So if that's what you're after, Anzog's not the greatest, I'll be honest, for that. And you do need to pair him with something like Boltusk, Wilbur, and Falcon. Anything to increase that damage output so you can improve on the heal. But the heal itself is not an overheal, you know, it's direct heal. So it's honestly not going to be great. But if you're not competing with him and whatnot, you just want a good support here, I guess he's decent. 
he's okay, but just don't expect good things. The, even the damage is pretty sad. He doesn't even have 700 attack stat as a base, so, eh. But he's okay. Margaret, Margaret, I've never been a fan of, but recently she did get a pretty decent buff as dodges that only dodge special skill damage got buffed, so that way... If they do dodge the special skill damage, they can dodge all the other effects too. So, even though it specifies special skill damage, they technically can dodge, like, mana ailment and, you know, defense down, which previously they couldn't. So, it's kind of weird, and I don't understand how they can dodge that, because it's basically like every other dodge hero, but... For that, Margaret just became a lot better. Plus, she gives mana for the dodge... And at very fast speed, it's nice, but the thing I never liked about her, she only covers three. So, alrighty, you only have a 50% shot that the enemy's going to hit one of your heroes as dodge, and then you get only, like, a 20 to 90% chance that it does dodge. So, it's just hard to work out. Not good defensively, because she has weak stats. She has a good attack stat, though, so decent tile damage, but overall, eh. Frida. Frida is probably the best one to get here. Elemental defense down, the first one to offer it to, I believe. And we all know that's great. Great for synergetic pairings to increase damage output paired with other hit threes in ice like Athena, Master Lepus, Thorn, heroes like that. Plus she offers more utility on top with the spell buffs, which, you know, we all love. At average speed, it does make her a little behind the times, but honestly, because she has elemental defense down, she'll be useful for years to come. And it also means she's good for Titans, too. And events. So definitely the top one to get. By Young. Uh, by Young. I've never been a huge fan of this one either. Personally, he's a fast speed sniper, but he doesn't do much damage. He never did. And instead of doing the full damage, he just lowers the accuracy and decreases healing received on that target. But you'd rather your sniper take out the enemy, not, like, weaken it and debil debilitate it for, like, the two turns that come. Sure, he has one of the highest accuracy to buffs, but it's, again, only to one target. It's hard to make work with other heroes, so not one I would recommend, to be honest. And last here of the month is Kiona. And Kiona, honestly, I've never been a huge fan of hers either, even back in the day, I did try to make a niche pairing with Wilbur and Mogar to make Mogar useful and Kiona useful, and it does work in order to scale that attack buff to the highest. But now we have heroes that offer Berserker to all. Agrafina does it so much better in purple, but, you know, at that same speed Black Knight does to all. And it's just made her very disappointing because a hit three attack buff, it's hard to even benefit from Titans because two of your heroes are missing out on that. So, it's almost just better to get a Titan banner if you need an attack buff in purple. No, I would not recommend her. And her damage is low. No, she's disappointing. So, row one, skip row two. Frida's really the only one. But, if you want to order it, I would put Anzog as number two, Margaret number three, Kiona number four, and Young number five. But, really, most of them are not worth it. Row three. The row three is the one that we didn't... Not what it was going to be, but this does bode well, as even though they have a, at least one more set of old event heroes, it's possible they might eventually move to like heroes like Black Knight, Lady of the Lake, Gazelle, who I've always wanted, because they do have costumes out, but also, I mean, so SG can still profit off of them. But also, I mean, they, they might benefit us. I'm, I'm actually very excited about that. Fingers crossed. Seasonal heroes, too, the very old ones, I can see them putting them into, like, Master Leap is Kill Hair. They're never going to put anyone new. They're never going to put anyone that doesn't have a costume or won't have a costume coming. If they have a costume coming out, it's possible, but if they don't, off the table. Just FYI, but, yeah, okay. Let me get back on track to Red Hood. And Red Hood used to be a good counter for when Gwyn was a popular tank, but... And a great pair next to her. <laughs> we are long past the day, and she was never that great. But she's one of the few counters to direct mana cut, so I suppose in that small instance, but no, I would not recommend her. She's one of those heroes that does a few things, but does none of them well, and it's just hasn't held up well in time. I, ha I have her. I always wanted her because I loved her art, but when I got her, it's just like, wow, you're so disappointing. Morgan Le Fay. Morgan Le Fay. Honestly... Like, 
four or five years ago was a good defensive wing. Now, gosh, she can't even hold a candle to any hero. She's one of the worst nature heroes. She's selfish, so she's hard to work on a team. Defensively, she just doesn't do enough and doesn't do it fast enough, even if she has fast speed. And offensively, she <laughs> takes care of herself, but it's not even that well. I mean, the protection she has is specific to fire. It's just, no, she's not, I would not recommend her. Rumpelstiltskin, Rumpelstiltskin. I think some people would find him fun. And for those people, I mean, go for it. It's always your game to list anybody else, including me. Follow your gut. But for those of you who like predictability, Rumpelstiltskin's not going to be for you, obviously. But some people like the randomness, even though most of the skills he does, even at random, are not that great in today's meta. I mean, 27% heal and cleanse, that's it at average speed. Oh my goodness. Increasing attack and lowering defense is the only thing. Not great. The only thing is the damage is okay, but like it was okay like a year ago. Now 270 to all at average, and that's really all besides a pathetic poison damage. Yeah, it's just not going to be enough. See, his costume makes him so much better, but you don't get the costume. So, <laughs> Guardian Owl. Now, Guardian Owl is never good. Not even for Rush, so I can't even think of an instance where I would recommend him, honestly. But, I guess, just to collect. And last one, Sargasso, who, in my opinion, is actually worse than Guardian Owl. I think he's, like, the worst purple, even probably worse than Mokar. Uh, hits. He does the splash damage, not cone, so it doesn't pair well. But then, he only does the reduced healing received, which... For a long time was not well regarded and I still don't really like it, but if you can pair it with like damage over time or reducing max health, it can be kind of useful now, but it's still, eh. and it's 90%, like why can't he at least get the 100% like Perseus? Uh, poor dude, man. I don't, no, I'm not a fan and I have him now, but eh, he doesn't get used. Okay, so that row... Rumpel would maybe be number one, just because he's unique. Red Hood, number two. Gosh, this is... And it's like, I would not recommend any of these. Morgan Le Fay, number three. Guardian Owl, number four. And Sargasso, number five. But they're all, you know, I would pass on all of them. Last one. This might be the last time we see Valhalla Heroes. So, let's see. Baldur. Baldur was only good when he got his costume. As you cannot choose who you're going to hit with this snipe damage. It's random, which defensively doesn't matter, but offensively it does, and you want to choose. But, I mean, he's another selfish hero, takes care of himself, and he's very unique. So, for those of you who like that, but as far as usefulness, I wouldn't say he's really good for that. He's another hero that can protect against mana cuts, though. Probably better than Red Hood if you, if you want that. Um, I mean, decent tile damage, but really, I don't know, needs the costume to shine, in my opinion. Uh, Frigg, probably the second best of these, and even though she's no longer the top defensive flank, she's still great for that, as you can't control what tiles you get on the board, and sometimes the board just works against you, and if you face her and you have a lot of nature tiles, your shit's getting fucked. I mean, especially if you have another one like Odin, Octros, that can be fun. Even now that people know how to counter, it can still be problematic. And, I mean, she offers the defense down, which we all know pairs well with many other heroes, especially if you have another nature fast hit all, like Catalan, her costumes and whatnot, Matt. Ooh, who else is there? There's, even if a hit three would be okay, but, you know, hit all is ideal here. And offensively, though, you need to expect that she's not going to be as great. She's okay offensively. She's not as great as she seems. So one of those heroes that you face her defensively and you're like, oh my god, I want her, I want her on my team, but then you get her and it's like, wow, you're, you're very disappointing. Wow, this is all you do? Because you do use up the nature tiles you rely on in order to get her charged. So by the time she is ready to fire, you either don't have any tiles on the board, so it's a weak effect, or you do and you're already going to win anyway. So it's kind of that thing, but she's still good. Fenrir, Fenrir, I'll be honest, I was never a fan of either not a fan of conditional hitters, especially conditional snipers. And he's got the worst, one of the worst conditions ever because it relies on the enemy being half dead. And in today's age with overheal, it's such a rare occurrence. The best instance would be like a Mother North 
with less than 50% HP, but like three minions on her or some shit, which I don't even know how that would happen because that would mean she'd be healing multiple times, but that would be the best case scenario. And you take her out. But yeah, it's just way too niche, way too specific. His costume makes him so much better too. Ugh. It's another selfish hero too, only takes care of himself. I don't know. Personally, not a fan. Norns. Norns is another unique hero, which I think I would probably rate third on this list of all to get, just because you can't get this skill anywhere else. And I'm excited myself to get it, but a mythic titan hero specific can be fun though, like with elemental heroes, if you want to change the element to something specific, but you only have, you know, a specific element to work with. You can't, not like Sam and Loki, they could turn into any color. It's predetermined, but at least you know what you're going to get. I don't know. I think the ones will be fun. Not great for her damage, but the secondary effect. Last one, Sam and Loki. Sam and Loki has a cult following. Some people really love him, and most others think he sucks and really hate him. I'm kind of excited, to be honest. And if you want to get him for the collection or, you know, try him out in, like, a Sam and Loki war, here's your chance. His costume, like, all basically make him better, even though he has the only costume that makes him slower. But you have that option if you want to chase his costume, but if not... 250, the thing is, it's specific to holy enemies, so like Mokar, which, ugh, I mean, you're only hitting a specific subset of heroes, but like Mokar, he hits all but dark. Sam and Loki only hits one element, so it almost makes him worse, but he has that cool instance where he changes the enemy's color, and it is random, but can be important with, like I mentioned, with Norns, the elemental heroes that rely on the enemy being a specific element to benefit from. So, in that instance, it could be fun to play with, but other than that, ugh, it's, it's gonna be tough. It's more for fun. Not gonna be realistic for competing. And this row, I would put Freak number one, Norn's number two, probably Salmon number three, just because he's unique. Ball, Dur number four, and Fenrir number five. I'm really hating on Fenrir, but really, main ones would be Frida, number one. Freak, number two. And those are the only two I would, like, aim for. And if you need to save for the next time, that might be the best. Because none of these other are backing, changing. Norns, maybe number three. Mm -hmm. Anzog, number four? I don't know. I'm not loving any of that, but it's, it's not the best list. I'll be honest, and... I understand people being disappointed by the list, because this list is disappointing, but being shocked by not seeing better heroes, I mean, I've not known this game company in the five plus years I've been playing to be better than I hope or expect. I, I guess I've dropped my idealism, but you know, you gotta hold hope in some instances, it keeps, it keeps the game alive, just not too much where you're disappointed, so I'm sorry. For those of you who are hoping for better, hopefully next time, maybe we'll be shocked. I don't know. You can't ever say for sure, but there is, a, the, as I mentioned in the beginning, a pre-selected hero set in place, so you don't get your hopes too out of whack. With the rest of the season four, we'll have Heroes of the Month. Heroes of the Month for sure in row two. Challenge event heroes for sure round three. Now that that's predetermined, row four is the only one that might change next time. But I suppose a lot of people are hoping it don't. So, for Alfred, whew, talking a lot. God, my throat gets a little sore, but you can let me know what your thoughts are down below if you disagree, agree. And two, let me know if there are any heroes you plan on getting. Love to hear from you. I'm going to obviously get all the ones I'm missing first. And this is the list I'm missing most out of. So, it'll be fun. I'll get Norns, Balder, Sam and Loki... Morgan the Fae, Rumpelstiltskin, and Owl, they are all the ones I'm missing, so they'll be first off, but six months is a long time, I'll probably fill the whole thing, to be honest, so. Alright, well, that's everything. Uh, this week there are four portals live, including the new Goblin event. I might pull in them, and if I do, hopefully put out a video, but if not, can... I guess we'll see. I want to wish you guys luck, though, in your summons this week, and we'll see you, I suppose, in the next video. All right, my lovely people, hope you, hoping you have a great rest of your week and had a fabulous weekend. We'll see you all then.